Hello, I am Miss Brain. Normally, you can find me in your head. I'm protected by the bones of your skull and the liquid inside it. I need to be protected and carefully looked after, as I'm very sensitive and very important. I control and regulate everything your body does. Brains and computers both break if you drop them, but the good news is they can both be repaired too. I help you understand the world around you. How do you do that? I receive signals from the outside world through the senses. That's seeing, hearing, touching, tasting and feeling. Once I receive a signal, I can send messages to all the different parts of your body. This means your body can respond in the right way to what is happening around it. So you tell my body what to do? Yes, I told you I'm the boss. Let me show you. This is a hot saucepan full of hot rice. I have just taken it off the stove. Can you touch it? Ouch! That's so hot! Ah, you see, it was your clever brain that had to send a message from your finger that the saucepan was hot and that you needed to move it away very quickly, otherwise you'd get hurt. So, how do you do that? Well, different parts of me control different things. Can we cut you open and have a look inside? No, you can't. But I can take you on a tour of the inside of a brain. Firstly, you can divide the brain into three major parts. The cerebellum, the brain stem, and the cerebrum. Cerebellum. This is a very small portion of the brain, yet very important. The cerebellum helps you maintain your balance and regulate your movements so that you can walk, dance, jump or ride a bicycle. Without the cerebellum, you'll be falling all over the place. Brainstem is what connects the brain to the spinal cord. This is the main pathway for information to move from the brain to the rest of the body. The brainstem controls basic body functions that you do without even thinking about them, like breathing, digesting food, heart rate, and whether you're awake or sleepy. Cerebrum. The largest part of your brain is responsible for all the thinking. It also controls your voluntary muscles, the ones you move by choice. Without the cerebrum, you wouldn't be able to play football, talk to your friends, or draw a picture. Ah, that's making sense. I was actually told if I put my two fists together, it looks a bit like the cerebrum and is about the same size. Yes, that is right. The cerebrum is split into two halves. We call them hemispheres. The right hemisphere and the left hemisphere. And guess what? The right hemisphere controls the left side of the body. The left hemisphere controls the right part of your body. Wow! So if I wave with my right hand, I need to thank the left part of my brain for helping me. And if I click with my left hand, I need to thank the right hand side of my brain. It's like a crisscross in my body! There's a really fun game you can do at home to make sure you exercise both hemispheres. It's called Use the Other Hand you need to try to do things using the opposite hand that you usually use. Try eating soup. Be careful, you might spill it everywhere. Oops! Have a go at writing your name. Can you do it as neatly as you can? Ugh. You may feel clumsy at first, but slowly you will improve. How does each hemisphere connect? There are nerves that connect the two hemispheres. Each hemisphere is in charge of different aspects of thinking and understanding. The left hemisphere is in charge of important tasks that have to do with logic, such as in science and mathematics, as well as language and speech. The right hemisphere is the more artistic and creative side of the brain. Wow, now I understand how all parts of me are managed by you. You are one of the most complicated and cleverly put together things. You really are the boss of me. Yes, I am your boss. 
You need to look after me so that I can keep doing all my jobs very well. Let me tell you a secret. The more you use us brains, the better we work. <laughs>